Okay, so this is going to be the second part of my video. This part is the how-to part of my video. How to make the weave closure, which is the end piece that ties the weave all together. And uh, let me show you what that looks like. That's the weave closure where you can't see where the weave track begins or ends. And I will show you how to do that based on my video request that I was asked to do. Um, just one thing, I decided to name her Susan. And I hadn't pointed that out, so that's what I wanted to say. Okay, so here, of course, I always work on my bed. I, I have my desk, but I can't seem to think clearly when I'm working on my desk. Anyways, uh, this is the weave that I used. It's from HairSisters.com. I really recommend this website. If you don't have a weave store, hair extension store, at your city or town or whatever and um, if you become a member the shipping rate the flat rate for any amount of weaves is about six dollars and change and each weave you can get the cheapest about seven dollars all the way to you know a higher rate and this one that I chose was is from Shaking Go and it's this is the color number 613 this is a sandy color kind of very close to what Julie's hair color looks like if you can imagine that and the name of it is Futura Yaki 12 which is 12 inches of uh, height of hair and so yeah so this was what was left over of the second weave so let me try to take that out Okay, so I have my weave track all laid out, and a couple things to note is that you need a needle. Um, when I see weave videos, they use a curved needle. I don't have any, and I've always used this type of straight needle in all my weaves, so I don't really think it matters because I had the same results as those other videos. And I usually will um, cut about uh, like 14 inches of string and tie a knot at the end. And um, I don't know if this is very visible, but it is visible when you are buying the weave. There is one side that is thicker, and then there's one side where it's you don't feel the thickness you feel more of the hair alongside of the track which is the top part of the hair and so I consider the back to be where the track is very thick and you don't feel the hair it feels much more rougher and you can see the elevation of the track I don't know if that's clearly visible in this video but let me try to zoom in on that I don't know if it shows but trust me there's one side where it's rougher and it feels much more elevated of the track and then the other side is flat and you will feel it be much more softer that's the front side and this is the back side the rough side okay this is a little hard to do with one hand Okay, so I've made a loop of the hair and it's about a quarter size in um, the roundness of this loop that I made. And uh, the soft side is on the outside and inside is the rough edge of the weave. And I'm simply going to, right here where that end of the weave here on this side, where my uh, fingernails are at, is where I'm going to sew a few stitches you can either sew sideways or uh, vertically I will make four, uh, four stitches vertically two uh, meeting halfway which is in the middle of this track right I will sew two um, 
stitches up and two stitches down and let me do that and I will show you what I mean okay just one more suggestion I would just pull out you maybe about um, I don't know uh, maybe a ruler size or a little bit more of hair and then the rest of the track I would just put it back in a ponytail that way you're not working with so much hair it'll drive you crazy so that's what I would do and uh, here's the loop that I was talking about and um, I sewed two stitches from this point, I'm going to point with my needle, two stitches up, and then from here, from back, going back in the middle, I sew two stitches down. And that's just to get the two weaves together and um, hold them in place. Okay, so now begins the hard process. So you have the soft side, which is the, the outer side. And the inside is the rough elevated side. What I'm going to do is flip this over because I will be sewing on the rough side, the back side of the weave. Like this. And I will sew in a spiral motion just like I've been gluing the doll's hair. And the reason for this is because. Um, as you get continue gluing towards the center of the doll's head you will see that it becomes really really difficult to keep gluing and continue and if you were to completely glue the weave onto the doll's head uh, eventually it will come to a point and you'll have a thickness of the weave that would be noticeable so this part is important so that you have a finished look and you don't have you know this weave exposed on the middle of her head and that's why I do this process and um, like I said this is this is a uh, I mean well I haven't told you guys but uh, to the person that I asked me for this video I told her that um, it might take a while to learn how to do this and uh, this is just my own style there are plenty of other videos that have that I have seen that show you other easier weaves this to me is just gonna look a lot more polished for your doll so anyways um, here something to note is that you must keep this uh, circle as flat as possible if you if you don't what will happen is uh, you will end up with a cone shape you won't end up with a flat you know a flat closure so make sure you you stretch this out the the, the long track you stretch this out and and sew this so that it is flat against the other the this uh, first track and basically what I will do is um, on the on this side you will see a zigzag pattern and uh, let me just poke this through so I I, I uh, did two stitches um, uh, on either side and I'm just going to poke this through so that I'm working on on the back side okay you might get hair caught in the way it really happens frequently so uh, I just be patient with it and my stitches I, I usually do them about two millimeters uh, away from each each one so every two millimeters I sew on a stitch that's what I mean okay so I'm gonna start right here which is where I poked the needle from and I will sew a zigzag and when I uh, want to uh, link it to the bottom of the track, I just go directly downward. So that in the front, it uh, looks like just a straight vertical little dash. But um, 
on this side what it looks like it looks like a zigzag okay so I'm at the bottom right here and I will uh, move a little bit across about two millimeters and then go straight down to the bottom of the track so you'll always end up on the bottom of the track when you are uh, stitching it together so again I go up on the first track about two millimeters away from the last uh, stitch and then I go directly downward in a downward motion I will do a few stitches and then I will show you what it looks like so you can see what I'm talking about 